particular cases involving spouses? Recent, any recent case where the one spouse was in, was in a nursing home or a hospital and the other spouse was at home and there was a particular issue? I caught them unawares. Because I think we're just going to use this example and I think, then I think we're going to close. Yeah. Um, we have had a situation very recently where there was the wife was in the facility and the gentleman was at home. And he clearly loved his wife dearly. It was so obvious. And he wanted her to come home. She smoked cigarettes. She had put burn marks and ruined many, many mattresses. And she was very unsafe at home. And she also had memory loss, not only short-term, but some long-term memory loss. And she wasn't always compliant with her medications at home. She was in the rehab setting. She had made a lot of progress, was doing very well. And the question was, is the husband dearly wanted her back home? But the concern was, is once she walked over that threshold, was she going to start smoking again? Was she not going to eat? Was she going to stay most of the day in bed? And we spent time talking with both spouses. We spent time reviewing the medical record at the rehab setting. We spent time talking to the children involved to really get a, a clear picture of, you know, yes, they would like, he would like to be with his wife, but he also wanted what was best for her. And it was best for her to stay at the facility because, as we pointed out to him, she needed, it wasn't just the smoking, it was a lot of medical care that she needed. And the cost would be prohibitive to have a nurse. Um, he focused in on the smoking, but we brought up the medical needs that she had. She wasn't able to go to the bathroom without help. She needed to have her blood pressure taken on a regular basis. And she had a list of medical needs that only a nurse would be able to do on a daily basis. And the, the question is, couldn't the visiting nurses take on that role? She needed more care than just an hour every day or an hour three times a week. She had medical needs that needed to be monitored throughout the day. It was one piece of it was the blood pressure, but there were other medications that also needed to be monitored very closely. And, so, and that's one of the things that you want to know is right. to the extent that there's a nursing requirement, to what extent is Medicare or Medicaid going to be willing to pay a visiting nurse? It would be ideal if they would pay a visiting nurse to be there 24 hours a day, right? What does the visiting nurse do? The visiting, visiting nurse nurses do? are very busy, and they really are. They're going out to do what they call skilled services. Uh, a new diabetic, just going home from the hospital, the visiting nurse is going to go in, they're going to educate, they're going to teach them how to draw up insulin, they're going to teach them how to check their blood sugars, they're going to teach them what to do if they're having a reaction to the insulin. Those are all important pieces. The same thing will be happening post heart attack if you've got other issues going on. You're on many medicines, you're a diabetic, you also have some difficulty breathing, so you're on some lung medications. Those sometimes those medications interact and you have to be watching blood pressures carefully. The visiting nurses get paid to come out for so many visits. After that, it's about $75 an hour once Medicare stops and you pay privately. And, and just so that you know, an assisted living is the same way. There is a nurse in some of those buildings, but they're not allowed to change the dressing on your leg that you had surgery on. The visiting nurse comes in and does that. If you need it done after the allotted time, you either have to pay for the visiting nurse to come out and do it, or you have to go to the doctor's office to get it done. 
Those are just how the systems are set up. The visiting nurses are more than willing to go out, but their payment comes mainly from Medicare. And if you want them above and beyond that, then it's about $75 an hour. So briefly in conclusion, uh, people come to me uh, because they've got problems that they can't quite figure out that are, that, that are fairly complicated in terms of eligibility and a bunch of other things, and they ask me to figure it out. And they pay me for that, and I'm asking, I'm working for those for the people that come in. Um, that's the same story with the geriatric care managers. There are a set of problems that you may have that that you really you you need a third party in many cases to figure it out, right? Or you may want a third party in those cases just to help you figure it out, so you have the peace of mind of knowing that you know what all the options are. So much of this is about knowing what the options are. Because remember, the goal of the exercise always is to sleep well at night. And I just wanted you to understand the possibilities for these folks and people like them in helping you sleep well at night. I saw one more question and then we're going to close. Yes, ma'am. When the need arises and you need help immediately, how do you, how do you find people such as yourself? If the need arises and you need help immediately, how do you, how do you find these people? Um, a lot of times, I know Debbie and I um, are in the community. We teach at a lot of the adult education classes. We teach a class in many of surrounding towns called the ABCs of Elder Care. You can go on the internet, and for those that don't have computers, um, I think it's kind of a word of mouth what right you, now. If you went on the computer, what do you type in? Geriatric, uh, geriatric care manager and the area where you are. Okay. And we belong to the National Association so we definitely come up and our website comes up. Okay. And I think as you look for geriatric care managers, make sure that they're certified. 2010, January of 2010, there was a certification in a course so that anybody who is a geriatric care manager has standards. Yeah. And has I literally saw a person who had been selling insurance who, to, who suddenly is a geriatric care manager now. <laughs> right. And, and not, <laughs> not a certified geriatric care manager. <laughs> so it is important to get someone, when you go to the national website, to look at, to make sure that they are certified. I think that's the most important, uh, because otherwise you could find someone who says, I'm a geriatric care manager, but not have the certification and the license behind them. There aren't any other questions. Thank you very Thank much you. for your attention. Thank we'll you. see you at Thank the next performance. Thank you very much. The next performance. The next seminar. Thank you.